So it is so good to see uh, many young people. So I want to speak to you as a, a fellow struggler seeking to please God. As we just sang, God has uh, given me a desire to be holy, uh, given me a desire to set up set apart for him and to please him and to do his will in my life. So I'm immensely grateful for God for leading me to the church. So I met a, a brother who was much uh, younger to me. Uh, I was 29, he was 25 or 26. I met him in office and uh, he uh, brought me to the church. So I, when I see the young people, uh, so uh, early 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, in the twenties. So they are uh, uh, coming forward and attending meetings and seeking to know the Lord. So it's such a joy to see that. See, when an old man in his sixties or seventies uh, carrying his Bible and going to church, it's it's uh, it's nothing too much to say about it. But a young young man, young person in his uh, uh, teenage and twenties. If he can be a witness for the Lord, uh, what a great uh, testimony, what a great uh, testimony God can uh, uh, give through, get through our lives. So I I want to um, speak from uh, what uh, I've been struggling and uh, how God has been helping me. Uh, see, when I was a uh, teenage or, or youth or years, uh, my struggle was uh, a fear for future, an anxiety. And uh, uh, there was no, I wish I could, uh, I wish uh, I had an elder brother who would uh, put his uh, hand on my shoulder and encourage me and direct me to God. So, but there was no one. So, but you uh, young, dear young boys and girls, you are so lucky. You have someone to guide you. You have someone to shepherd you. There is someone caring for you. There is someone praying for you. And especially if your parents are in church, uh, uh, it's God has chosen you at a very young age to be set apart for him and to do his will. So, yeah, shall we turn to Exodus chapter 15? Exodus chapter 15. So, Exodus 14 is where uh, God uh, does a great miracle for the people uh, of Israel, people of Israel, and then he divides the sea and uh, lead them. And uh, Exodus 15, 1. Then Moses and the sons of uh, Israel sang this song to the Lord and said, I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider have, he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. This is my God. I will praise him. So this is not only Moses. If you look at there, it is Moses and all the people of Israel, the sons of Israel. They all were uh, full of joy of this uh, victory God has given them. Uh, uh, they were full of joy for this deliverance God has uh, given them. It's a uh, what a wonderful beginning we can have when God does a, a mighty miracle and save us and bring us into the church. And uh, I see somebody put a WhatsApp status of the recent World Cricket World Cup. India up to the semi final they didn't lose a single game, but they lost in the uh, final game. So it's not just about the beginning, it's also about the end to consistently consistently uh, enduring in the faith. That's what God called us for. Here, uh, after this uh, great uh, victory or uh, in, uh, miracle, when it comes to verse 22, the same chap chapter, Exodus 15, verse 22. So here, uh, Moses was leading the people and they reached this place called Mara, word uh, Verse 23. So there was no drinking water. And uh, and they, they were named Mara. So the people grumbled at Moses and saying, what shall we drink? So they, they faced a, a, a little uh, scarcity of water. They didn't have enough water. So they started uh, grumbling. So they completely they forgot about the mighty miracle God has done. And Again, in next chapter, verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 3. Chapter 16, verse 3. They again started grumbling at this place. Uh, would that we have died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt. So we sat by the boats of meat and uh, we, ate we ate bread to the full. 
So you have brought us into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. So they again faced a, a issue. They wanted uh, meat and bread and they started grumbling again. They were not content. They were not happy in that uh, little circumstances where God led them. And then again in chapter verse 17, chapter, uh, chapter 17 verse uh, 3, Chapter 17, verse 3. The people thirsted there for water and they grumbled against Moses. Why now have you brought us up from Egypt to kill us uh, and our children and our livestock with thirst? And verse 7, they started doubting the Lord among us or not. So uh, you can see each step they are going down, down, down. So they lost their gratitude. They lost their uh, thankfulness and reverence for God. And they started grumbling against God's servant. So, have you ever have you ever faced uh, the situation that uh, God does God God is doing something in your life? God answered your prayer, and you find yourself praising and thanking God. But sometimes God didn't answer your prayers in the way God expected. Expected you expect, and then uh, doubts, confusion, lack of faith, unbelief is coming into your heart. So I struggled with it. I I struggled with it. Uh, you know, one of the two uh, two greatest enemy which I see. Yes, we have generally we have three enemies: the flesh, the world, and the devil. But uh, in in detail, if I say it is the reasoning of my mind and uh, the feelings which comes into our heart, these two are often it is deceptive. So we. Sometimes everything go well and I found I'm rejoicing and happy in the Lord. But sometimes so things go in a different direction or different way which we don't expect. So we are discouraged and gloomy. So is it is it uh, God's will? You know, in this, um, if you, you don't need to turn there, but Hebrews chapter 3 is mentioned. This is where they tested God. They tested God. They're doubting. They're doubting God. Really asking, is the Lord among us or not? So if I, if the Lord is with us, why all these things are happening? So have you ever asked a question, Lord, are you with me? Am I your child? If I am your child, why all these things are happening? So, you know, we grew up in different culture and, you know, I come from a culture. I've seen the neighbors, the people and the neighbors in the place which I grew. See, if a cat uh, crosses my path, so that day is bad. A cat crosses your path, that day will be bad. So it's some, some belief they have. So we start thinking in that direction. If some, everything goes good, then God is with us. And something goes wrong, then God is not with us or God is not happy with us. No, dear brothers and sisters, this is not uh, God's will for our life. Now, if you turn to, uh, you know this incident where when Jesus appeared to the disciples, Thomas was not there. You don't need to turn there. But... Uh, when uh, he came, uh, the uh, disciples told him, Jesus appeared to us. He said, I won't believe. I won't believe, he said. So what a sad statement. See, um, it is Thomas who had a, such a, a courage when, uh, when he knew that uh, Jesus will be killed. Uh, he said, let's go and die with him. Let's go and die with him. What a, what a courageous action. What a, what a bold step he could make. But he couldn't believe that Jesus is risen and uh, Jesus appeared to the people. And when Jesus appeared to him, Thomas, uh, do not be unbelieving, but uh, believing. And blessed have you seen me and blessed are they. Blessed uh, you have seen me, have you believed? Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. So it's a greater privilege, a greater blessing when we can come to a place where we can believe when there is no trace of uh, a sign of God is going to answer my prayer or God is going to turn the things around. As you can see, the one of the brothers put that uh, WhatsApp, so the, not, the status, I walk by faith, not by sight. So it is it easy to come to a place where we, come, uh, we walk by simple faith? We walk uh, not by sight. Um, let's see from the scripture. Now, uh, if you turn with me to Psalm 138, Psalm 138, the beautiful, beautiful Psalm, where uh, 
David David writes this um, verse six. It says, "Though the Lord is exalted, yet He regards the lowly, but the haughty He knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, You will revive me. You will stretch forth Your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and Your right hand will save me, and the Lord will accomplish what concerns me." So. he is expecting that god will revive him in the midst of the trouble and there will be wrath of the enemies so when we are in the midst of the trouble in our life you know we saw just now the people of israel they started doubting the lord in the midst of trouble and uh, even if there are enemies before us what we read here the lord will stretch out his hand and save us so you know you remember psalm 23 even if i walk through the valley of the shadow of death the lord will be with us so god has promised one thing that he will never forsake never never forsake us never leave us or no forsake us so he had uh, he has promised his wonderful presence with us if you are a child of god if you are really repented of your sin and if you turn to christ in faith and if you accepted him as your lord and savior and god our father is your heavenly father and the holy spirit is your helper and you have a, a lord, lord jesus christ he is seated at the right hand side of god and interceding for you so it's a threefold protection for a child of god so no matter what the trouble what the difficulty you have to go through and uh, god will bring you out of that so you know uh, i i didn't know when i came to uh, christ first in my life i never knew that there is a lot of trouble i have to go through a little bit of difficulties that i have to go through so i thought it's going to be a, a cake walk but i look back uh, uh, the lord was very present with me in all the troubles he has uh, he has delivered me from one by one and even if i speak to you now uh, dear young people i have uh, there are certain areas which i look i feel like uh, fearing lord what about this but i am learning to trust god because uh, god has uh, promised something and he will do that so here if you come to romans chapter 4 here we read about abraham romans chapter 4 4 so here is a man who tr- uh, learned to trust god it says uh, 4 verse 18 in hope against hope he believed so that he by he might become a father of many nations according to that which he had spoken was 19 without becoming weak in faith he contemplated his own body now as good as a good as dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of sarah's womb yet with respect to the promise of god he did not waver in unbelief but we, he grew strong in faith giving glory to god and be, having believed he believed he fully assured that god is what god has him promised he was able to perform so god has uh, given a promise to abraham that he will bless him and uh, he will bless him with uh, children and uh, uh, your descendants be like a, a sand of the sea but uh, then he was uh, almost 100 years old and his body was weak and his wife even sarah's womb was weak so you know the promise of god says that i will bless you but his body says it is impossible so you know if you uh, let's let's go to we can read these things so abraham is a, a great encouragement to us especially when i see how god led him now we know he is a, a man of faith a father of faith we call him but uh, how how was he strong in the beginning so verse 12 sorry chapter 12 verse 1 genesis chapter 12 so god called abraham from uh out of his family and god uh, commanded him to go to such and such a place and he started he obeyed god and uh, chapter 12 was 2 uh, i will make you a great nation and i will bless you and make your name great so you shall be a blessing and i will bless those who bless you so uh, god called abraham and he gave him a promise that uh, he gave him direction where to go uh, which direction to go and uh, when it comes to verse 7 uh 
the Lord appeared to Lord appeared to Abraham and said, "To your descendants, I will give this land." So he built an altar there for uh, there to God uh, who had appeared to him. So he was obeying God. He was uh, follow going in the direction which uh, God told. And then verse ten, there was a famine in the land. So he he faced a problem. He faced a struggle. He was uh, we know he is a man of faith, but he look at him what he did. He went down to Egypt. So he changed his route. God called him to go to one direction, but he make, make, took a little deviation. Like Jonah, God asked him to go to Nineveh, but he took a, a ship and went somewhere else. So there, uh, see, uh, verse 13, he told a lie to the people, uh, to the Pharaoh, Pharaoh and the people there, that his wife is his sister. His wife is uh, his own sister. So this is man of faith. Now, did uh, God call him? Did, did Lord, Lord God just uh, left him like that because he disobeyed? No. It says, verse 17, the Lord struck Pharaoh and his house with great plague because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. See, God is standing by the one whom he had a promise, given a promise. My, my dear young people, you trust God and you started your Christian life and you messed up. So you believe God will leave you alone? You know, uh, I have uh, two children, and one of if one of them gets sick, I will take leave and I will sit with them if if the situation demands it. So if uh, we'll try to do the best we we can, so when we are sick, when we are backslidden, when we lost our love, when we go after world, do you think the Lord is going to leave us? You know, you think of that disciples, two disciples. I, you don't need to turn there. They were walking away from. Jerusalem. They were walking in a different direction. What we see, the risen Lord went and walked with them and uh, he brought them back. So we have a God who is uh, faithful. So the man of faith, what we see here is his faithlessness. He was not faithful, but God was faithful to him. So again, in verse 14, what I want you to see, God called them but each and every turning of his life, God is going down, encouraging him, building his faith again and again, not once or twice. In, in Genesis chapter 14. So Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. So I just, you know the story where Loth I was taken captive by the kings and there was a great battle. So Abraham uh, went with his people and fought the kings and uh, he brought all of them back. What a mighty, <laughs> mighty person. What a courageous man. He could go and fight the kings along with the few people who were with him. Think about king fighting with a king. So it's, it's not easy. So he went ahead and uh, he, he defeated them. And verse uh, chapter 15, chapter 15, verse uh, 1. After these things, after all these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not fear, Abraham. I am a shield to you. See what God spoke to him. Do not fear. If you would go to that place and you ask the people living there, who is the courageous man out here? Who is the brave, most brave, uh, bravest person here? They would say there is a Hebrew called Abraham. He is very bold and courageous. He don't fear anything. He even go and fight with kings. But God says to him, do not fear. Because God can see our heart. We can act very bold outside. We can show off that we are very courageous. But with that, we can have a fear, anxiety in our heart concerning the promises of God, concerning our failures, concerning the, the past failures. But, uh, you know, what God said to him, uh, I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. See, he rejected the reward which the king offered him. But, he, has, uh, he had a greater reward which God has promised. But see, he is speaking his fear. Oh Lord God, what will you give me since I am childless and uh, the hair of my house is, uh, hair of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. So he, he knew that God has promised but he was discouraged. Here is a promise God has given to me but it is not yet fulfilled. And verse 5, look at this verse. Genesis 15 verse 5. He took him outside and said, now look towards the heavens and count the star if you're able to count them. So God called Abraham outside his house 
and told him to look at sky and show them the stars show him showed him the stars so you know i've seen uh, when children cry parent take them out small children cry parent take them out and show them the moon and then they feed them so see uh, god is coming down to our level our level where we can grasp and we can understand him if uh, god has called you my dear brother sister he will come down to your level you don't have to raise him yourself to his level that is impossible you we can't raise there is nothing in us which uh, uh, helps us to have fellowship with god god has to come down to our level and he has to put his uh, righteousness put his uh, goodness in us so that we can talk to him face to face so uh, what i want to show, uh, show you here brothers and sisters god called abraham with a purpose and god has uh, given him a promise but abraham was not a man of faith when god called him yes he had a little faith he started uh, with a little faith not like a, a, a great faith he had only a faith like a mustard seed and then he made a lot of mistakes lot of blunder but in and out every time god was going and speaking to him god has look back over your life of brothers and sisters when you were discouraged in the past haven't you did you receive encouragement maybe through some brother some sister so i look back i i see the number of times god has encouraged me if i had not received god's encouragement i would not be sitting here so god is a god of encouragement he wanted to bless you he wanted to encourage you and the faith even you don't have to produce the faith you don't have to struggle for the faith you know it says in hebrew 12 jesus is the author and the finisher of the faith so when he plants a seed of faith in your heart he will cause it to grow he will come and speak to you he will speak to you when you go away from him he will the holy spirit will speak to you will you will you be uh, you know responsive to him will you respond to him you know philippians chapter 1 philippians philippians chapter 1 verse 6 for i am confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perfect it perfect it until the day of christ jesus it says god has started work in you that in your heart god is working you know when we are uh, uh, not uh, god's children we are of this world god cannot work inside our heart but god can work in our circumstances if you were sensitive to the things which is happening around us your eyes should turn to god you know i heard about uh, i don't know jet sir i don't know i hope some of you heard about him so he is a missionary to burma see he was a son of a, a pastor a congregation pastor and uh, when he reached at the age of 16 he under the influence of a, a bad friend he declared himself an atheist so his parents were uh, hurt broken and but he uh, in his rebellion he went out of his house and he started enjoying the world a little later when he was traveling and he stayed in a inn see god could not work inside his heart but god was still behind him so he he went and stayed in a hotel and uh, in the night uh, he could recognize uh, uh, next to him there was a patient a uh, person a patient, uh, patient who was severely sick and uh, they were only separated by the curtain so he could see many people are coming to him and seeing him and somehow he slept and when when he got up uh, uh, he realized the person who was next to him was dead so he he was shocked uh, that person was dead and to his surprise so he asked him what is the name of that person who died and that's the young person who was influenced him when he was in college he was the person who uh, influenced him and made him a uh, Uh, made him an un- unbeliever and then that moment he he returned his home he went back to his home and he joined a theological college and he was born again and you know the story he became a, a wonderful missionary so god work in our circumstances so you look over the things which are happening around you often it is our failures or the see i came to a place where uh, it was my childhood dream to go somewhere abroad and live there and uh, i started from my home but i landed up in a place where i couldn't go i was stuck there for 6 7 month but there god uh, one of the, as i told you one young brother met and he took me to church so then till then god could only work in my circumstances now when we accept him when i give my heart to him when i give my body to him and when i invite him as a, a lord of my heart he comes in and he started working in our life so he speak he speak to us little by little and he guides us he encourages 
so i hope uh, dear young people all of you have opened your heart to the lord if you not given your body to christ there is no meaning in opening your heart to god you cannot say i give my heart to you but i give my body to the world no how can we it is it says those who join with christ is become one body with him so do you know dear young people your body is a, it's the temple of the holy spirit will you give for all the members of your body to christ for his glory his honor so that he he uh, let him start a work let him even if uh, uh, you look back and see there are failures and failures and again let's start a new beginning you god will help you and uh, you know in the same chapter philippians second chapter 16 and 17 philippians second chapter 16 and 17 work out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is god who is at work in you work out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is god who is at work in you both to will and to work his good pleasure that god will give you the desire and the ability to do his will but it says we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling that in every opportunity in every temptation i will obey what the holy spirit is prompting me if the holy spirit is asking me to run away i'll run away from that if you know god's word say that if i it is better to go better to be in heaven with uh, one eye than to be in uh, you know without uh, uh, with with living with eye and go to hell it is better to be in heaven without hand than living on earth with hand and go to hell so dear brothers and sisters we have a great promise god has given to us and god himself is our refuge and strength he has promised that he will work and we have a hope that he what he promised he will complete you know abraham believed that god is able god is able to fulfill his promise in my life you know if abraham knew the song he is able he is able i know he is able i think if you know the song if abraham knew the song i would i believe he would sing that song so dear young people may god give you a song in your heart each day no matter what the difficulties what the obstacles which come before you i believe you can always see the footsteps of lord jesus christ in your trouble i was reminded when brother zack went to court the lord told him if you look you will see my footstep so there is no struggle there is no difficulty where you can't find the footsteps of christ it was of forgiveness it was of humility it was of uh, trust and faith so may uh, uh, bless you all of you young people and i pray that uh, all of you will become effective and be a witness for god wherever god uh, send you wherever god uh, take you out of in this world may you be a witness for him and may he may he bless you and uh, make you a greater blessing to the people around people around you amen